Today I code the signal rules for two overbought oversold type strategies using the RSI and stochastic RSI technical indicators. Back after this brief message. DarwinX is a UK FCA regulated broker and asset manager on a mission to disrupt the financial trading, investing and asset management industries. As a trader, you'll benefit from cost-effective market access via multiple trading platforms and APIs. These enable trading and investing in any US stock, over 60 of the most liquid futures contracts, FX and CFDs. You can even diversify your portfolio by buying and selling other traders' strategies as investable assets themselves. So, if all of that sounds interesting, Learn more by clicking on the link top right now or find further links in the description right below. Now back to today's tutorial. Today I'll be taking you through the MQL code for MetaTrader to implement overbought and oversold signals provided by the RSI and stochastic RSI indicators. This tutorial is one episode in the Spotlight on Indicators series See a link in the description to get access to all of the other episodes. Okay, so before we get into the code, some of the principles behind this tutorial. I won't be explaining all of the code from first principles, so it will assume that you have some prior knowledge of coding and of the MQL language. However, saying that, if you use an alternative coding language, then you shouldn't have any problem at all understanding the code and also transferring the logic of that to code of your choice. Now, as part of the tutorial, I will be using techniques that I've explained in previous tutorials. So for example, I will be using a multi-symbol trading algorithm, which in this case will allow me to backtest 28 Forex pairs simultaneously. But bear in mind that the purpose of this tutorial isn't to explain a multi-symbol EA. It's to show the development of the RSI and stochastic RSI strategies that we've spoken about. And so I won't be repeating all of that information about multi-symbol EAs, for example. But what I will do is provide a link so that you can have access to those tutorials if you want to find out more. And then finally, the same as always, you must perform your own backtesting to ensure that any strategy meets your own risk objectives. Please don't believe any of the results that I present. You must do your own due diligence and testing. Okay, so let's now get into the code. As you'll know from previous episodes, I'm going to be specifically comparing the effectiveness of the standard RSI indicator with the stochastic RSI indicator. The first section here is only run if the open signal method or the closed signal method in my expert advisor has been set to the RSI overbought oversold strategy. Likewise, the section here will be run if I've set that to the stochastic RSI overbought oversold. So you'd need to develop some similar logic in your own expert advisor that only created the relevant handles for the indicators. So let's take a look at RSI first of all. You'll notice here that my handle for the indicator is actually an array. And the reason for that is because this is in a multi-symbol expert advisor. All of the testing that I'll be undertaking will be on 28 currency pairs, and so the value here will be 28. Now, this, if you remember, was one of the caveats that I mentioned in the introduction, and I'm not going to explain in full how a multi-symbol EA works, but in the video description, there is a link to a tutorial where I do exactly that. So here I'm looping through each of the 28 currency pairs and instantiating a handle for the RSI indicator, passing it the value of the symbol for this iteration of the loop. As I've said before, I'm not going to be performing any optimizations on the parameters of RSI, which is why I've hard coded that at 14 periods. If there's a problem with that, I'm raising an error, 
And because this should be called from the onInit function, if I return false here, that will then tell onInit that it should not continue processing and should halt the expert advisor. Otherwise, if everything goes well, I simply print out the details that that handle has been successfully created. Now, the process of instantiating the handle for the stochastic RSI indicator is almost identical. The only difference here is that with RSI, we're using the built-in RSI function. Whereas for stochastic RSI, as you know, I've downloaded this from the MQL5 marketplace. And so here we need to use the iCustom function. And one of the parameters that we pass to this is the name of that indicator. In the same way, I'm not going to be performing any optimizations. And so I've hard coded 14 periods for the RSI calculation and also 10 periods for the stochastic part of the calculation. Now, this indicator that I've covered in a previous episode is actually capable of performing two stochastic calculations, but I don't want to do that. I think that's becoming a little bit too complex. And so by setting this parameter here to one means that that second calculation won't be activated. Next, the period of five is for the smoothing calculation. And then I'm just passing this values of 80 and 20 for the overbought and oversold levels, although this won't actually have any impact on the logic of the EA. These are just values that are for presentation of the indicator if you're looking at it in the user interface, but I've just put them here for completeness. Other than that, everything is the same between these two. As I said, this code needs to be run at the beginning of your expert advisor when it's initially instantiated and so you need to call this from the onInit function. So let's now move on to the logic for the processing of the rules themselves. And this, of course, should be called every time that you want to process those rules throughout the lifetime of the EA. So that will be either every tick or every minute, depending on how you've set up your expert advisor. For my testing throughout the whole of the analysis, I'll be using one minute testing. So every time a new one minute bar appears, this function will run. And so that controlling is all done from the on tick function. Again, I've put together tutorials in the past that look at how to set up one minute bar processing. And so again, I'll put a link to those in the video description. So here, the first thing that we need to do is to copy the indicator values from the indicator itself to a local buffer. So the local buffer in my case is just called buffer indicator. And I use this function called TLAM copy buffer to copy those values for me. But this function is exactly the same as the standard copy buffer function that's available in MQL5, but just with some additional error checking and also the command to set that buffer array as a series. So it's just a convenience helper function, if you like. But you can do exactly the same in standard MQL5 using the copy buffer and the array set as series function. Now, obviously, if there's an error with that, then I will not allow a trade to be opened. So I just return this value so that my EA knows that it mustn't take any action. Then I set these two values the current indicator value and the previous indicator value. And the reason for this is that I want to detect when the indicator crosses those boundaries of oversold and overbought. And of course, I can only do that if I have two values, because one value will have to be one side of that threshold, while the other value will be on the other side. Now, the exact thresholds that I'm going to use I'm calling the long execution level and the short execution level. So if this level is traversed by the indicator values, then a long position will be opened. So in other words, this is the oversold level. And if this level is broken by the indicator, then a short trade will be opened. And so this is effectively the overbought level. 
So I have a single input parameter in my expert advisor, which in this case I'll be setting at 20. So the long execution level will be at a stochastic RSI level of 20, and then the short execution level will be at 100 minus 20, which of course is 80. The reason I've done it this way is so that if I change this, for example, to a value of 10 for the long execution level, then the short execution level will automatically be set to 90 so that we have symmetrical entries. And then the logic here is quite simple. I'm looking initially for when the stochastic RSI enters the oversold region in order to instigate a long position. And so here I'm looking for the previous indicator value to be greater than that level that will initially be set to 20, but the current indicator value to be less than that. So in other words, the indicator has traveled into that oversold region. And when that's the case, I return long from this function so that my expert advisor knows that it needs to open up a long position. Now, of course, your expert advisor may well use a different mechanism, but you should return whatever value is required in order to perform that transaction. And then, of course, for the short position, it's exactly the opposite. When the previous indicator value is less than this value of 80, but the current value is greater than 80, it means that we've gone into that overbought region, and that's when we're going to initiate a short position. And if neither of those are the case and we haven't returned yet, then we simply return no trade because it means that one of those two boundaries has not been crossed by the indicator. Now, the logic for the RSI indicator is absolutely identical to this. But in that case, we, of course, copy from the RSI handle instead of the stock RSI handle. Now, this is the code for the close signal. And this is almost identical, but the logic is reversed. We're looking to close a long trade when the stock RSI enters the overbought region. So you can see that logic here and vice versa for a short position. So if you think about it, this means that as soon as a long position is closed, because the logic here is the same as that to open a short position, we should actually be always in the market. So as soon as a long trade closes, a short one will open. As soon as a short trade closes, a long position will open. And we might not keep the logic this way, but at least that's what we'll start with. Now, I'm going to keep all of my initial analysis to the years 2012 to 2017, and I'm classing these five years as my in-sample data. And then I'm keeping from 2017 up to September 2022 as my out of sample data, which I will use to validate any strategy to make sure that it works on previously unseen data. Now, one thing that you always need to do whenever you develop any trading strategy is run it in visual mode to ensure that the rules are being processed in exactly the correct way to which you'd envisaged. And so in MT5, there is visual mode in order to do that and to test that logic. So let's start that in the visualizer now. We just maximize this and move to the H1 chart here, which is what I'm using as my primary time frame. And just so that we can see some of this information, I'm going to pause it. So if we take a look at the latest trade here, we can see that a short position was opened at this point, which if you look at the indicator here, you can see that when the stochastic RSI passed from below to above this threshold of 80, this was a sign that the price had become overbought. And so that's why the short position has opened. And that then stays open until this point, which if you look down, is where the indicator went into that oversold region. So that looks as if it's operating exactly as we expected. Next, let's take a look at this position here. This time it's a long position and it's entering the long trade when the stochastic crosses over into the oversold region. So that looks good. And then it closed 
at the point that it went into the overbought region. So again, we now have a long trade and a short trade, both of which look as if they're operating correctly. And likewise, we can go through all of these and make sure that they're operating as we expected. Now, this is an interesting one here. If you look down, you'll see that the indicator doesn't appear to have gone into the oversold region. So you might be thinking, well, why has this trade opened? But there's a reason for this. Remember, we are processing every minute, but the chart we're looking at here is an H1 chart. So let's just change this so that we can see a little more clearly. So what will have happened here is that when this particular bar initially opened at this level here, at that point in time, the stochastic RSI would have crossed into this region, opening the trade. But then by the end of the bar, price had gone up. And so because the price had gone up, this value had moved up above this level. And so it looks as though it didn't cross, but in actual fact, it did. So you just need to be wary of things like this when you're testing on a particular time frame but processing on a shorter time frame, such as every minute. So this looks as though the logic is being processed perfectly. And so in the next episode, I'm going to start looking at the results of this. So be sure to tune in next time to see those. That's it for this episode, but before you go, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to the channel. And by making sure you also click on the notification bell will mean that you get notified when new episodes from DarwinX are released. Now, until next time, trade safe.